Hi folks, it's Steve here from analyticsinaction.com and what I want to do today is talk about tuning SQL Server Integration Services packages to make them run faster. Um, and this topic will become, I suppose, very um, relevant for you when you start to deal with larger volumes of data. Um, and today what I'll do is I'll just do an initial introduction by talking about blocking, partial blocking and non-blocking transformations and addressing um, and being aware of these sort of uh, transformations will allow you to make some pretty significant um, performance improvements with a, um, in your integration services packages. So what I'll do is I'll jump straight across into Business Intelligence Development Studio or as it's now called uh, SQL Server Data Tools I think. Um, this is the this interface is, is pretty much the same for all of the um, SQL Server versions from really from 2005 through to 2012 so this is all applicable so as I mentioned there are three um, three categories of transformations um, blocking partial blocking and um, uh, totally blocking transformations. so um, what happens with say um, and of these the blocking transformations are the slowest and the reason they're the slowest is that um, say if we um, look at say a, an ag a, a sort um, transformation, what's actually going on there is the um, integration services needs to throw all the data up into memory, look at all of the um, rows in order to actually understand what the um, sort order should be. So as a result it needs to look at all of the data and it needs to really block it, look at it and then let it flow through. Um, so that's why they're very slow. At the other end of the continuum we have these non-blocking transformations. So an example might be a conditional split where it's diverting say a value greater than a certain amount um, down a particular branch with integration services. And it can do that on a row by row basis. So it's no, there's no, um, it doesn't really slow down at all. And what we have in the middle is the partial blocking transformations. And sort of as an analogy, um, you could probably think of it as a these scenarios as um, traffic move along roads. So a non-blocking uh, situation is like traffic, uh, free-flowing traffic and there's nothing really stopping it. Um, a partial blocking um, transformation would be similar to say when someone rubbernecking, when someone breaks down on the side of the road and all the cars slow down to look and then they all get backlogged and it's stopping and starting. And say a blocking transformation um, would be an example where the road's just blocked until say there's been a rock fall and it's all the traffic just backloads up, nothing passes through and then eventually that um, say rock fall might get cleared then all the traffic passes. Um, and what we'll see is when you run these, um, these three different um, categories we'll see that the non-blocking transformation will finish um, the non yeah, we'll finish first, then the partial blocking, and then the full blocking. Um, and so there's a number of different things you can actually do to, once you're aware of these um, three categories, there's a number of things you can do to improve the um, performance of the um, of the packages. So one of the first things you can do is, uh, here we go, we'll jump across to this merge union, is actually remove blocking transformations just by some smart architecture. So a merge and a union all essentially do the same sort of thing. So what I'll do is I'll stack one data set underneath another so it's appending two data sets together. Um, a union all doesn't require a sort before it but a merge does. So if you use a union all rather than a merge you can often achieve the same end result and what you'll do you'll see that this union all will run much faster than the um, than the merge. So one thing to note here is that uh, in this example we're dealing with quite small data sets, only half a million rows of data. A lot of these performance um, differences will become much much more significant when you're dealing with large volumes of, of data. So what I've done in these demos, I just tried to have this the right sort of balance in that you can actually see there's a difference but you don't have to wait for 45 minutes for the actual packages to, to run. So smart, the using appropriate um, alternate transformations is, is one way to improve the uh, performance of packages. Another way is say for example if you do require a sort um, in there you can run that, you can replace that sort transformation with say 
an order transformation at source. So what this is essentially doing is it's sending off a message to the underlying SQL Server database we're connecting to to say, please sort the data at source. And when it hits integration services, it's already sorted, so we don't need to actually run a sort transformation. Um, although that is this, it's still there is a sort still running, it's much more efficient to actually run it outside of integration um, services. So um, it will uh, run much, much quicker. So with this example, I'm not actually going to um, run this, but because it actually takes so long to to run, run through. Um, but what you find is that after about 15 minutes, the um, it'll actually take, sorry, it'll, this package takes about 15 minutes to run and the one with the order clause in it is roughly two and a half times faster than the uh, the one with the sort in it. So that'll take, um, I think it was about 45 minutes for this um, one with the sort here to run through. This was about 15 minutes. Um, so another, so some other ways you can actually um, improve the performance of the packages of uh, integration service packages really centers around just trying to reduce the amount of data that's going through the package by reducing the amount of data going through less less data needs to be thrown up into memory and therefore the um, your server or, um, or or PC will cope with it much quicker so as an example um, if you're looking at um, what you can do is reduce the amount of, of source columns so for example here We've got six columns, but in reality, you may find that it's only only the top three columns there are actually are actually relevant. So what you could do is just turn those off and not bring those not bring those through. And that's what I've done on the side here. I've got um, I've only brought through three three columns. Um, so when you run those, you'll see that the this side here will run much quicker than this side here. Again, just reducing the data volumes that's going through. So that's still running there. There we go. So that's an example of, of what you can do. So another way to reduce the amount of data that needs to flow through integration services is play around with the data type. So this is particularly relevant if you're dealing with flat files because as soon as you when you connect to a flat file by default it'll pull the data in as a string format string format is a is not a particularly um, efficient way to store store data if possible it's much better to store it as a um, for example as a um, as an integer so we click down here let's edit that see um, okay, so that's the inter integer connection manager, so that's the one associated with this. We'll see that this is a two byte signed integer. They're tiny, so very little um, very little um, storage over here associated with those. In contrast, at the right at the other end of the continuum, we'd have the string format. And this is a string format with a 2,000 column, uh, 2,000 uh, column width so that's a very very broad wide string format so that'll run very very slowly in fact it'll run so slowly I'm not actually going to run I'm not actually going to trigger this package because um, it will um, take about 10 minutes to run so those are um, just a, a couple tips around how to make uh, packages run run quicker so what I'll do in the next video is I'll talk a bit um, more about some of the more technical aspects. So things about buffer management and 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 how to get the most out of um, your memory by tweaking various um, um, configuration uh, variables. Um, if you found this um, video uh, useful, come across to my uh, website, Analytics in Action. It has um, stacks and stacks of stuff on learning integration services. Um, has things on um, uh, also lots of videos on reporting uh, reporting services um, re uh, power pivots also a bit on um, dashboards such as Tibco Spotfire also got things on modeling so predictive uh, predictive modeling root cause analysis um, 
and just analytics in, in general. So you'll probably find that really, uh, really useful. Um, the other option is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So just hit the subscribe button there. That way you will get an alert every time a, um, I produce a new video. So I hope you um, found that useful and um, and yeah, follow, um, follow my subsequent um, uh, tutorials.